Jungle Deep, 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 the podcast that explores the tropical lifestyle. Hello, and welcome to the podcast, Jungle Deep. This is your host, Dr. Jones. We are on safari, and I'm here with you to learn, to have fun, and to explore the jungle. To the uninitiated, it can be amazing to learn about just how many items we use and enjoy on a daily basis that come from the tropics. Our field correspondent, Kelly Patterson, is reporting in today about another favorite that some of us would hate to have to do without, and that is coffee. Where did it come from originally? How much coffee is produced each year? How does the growing of coffee impact the environment? We are going to learn the coffee basics and learn a new way to enjoy coffee with another one of Kelly's recipes. In addition, we're going to hear some Rainforest music from my collection. Two tracks from the Rainforest Awakening album by Geraldo Miguel Maza. So grab a cup of your favorite steaming coffee, sit back and relax, and enjoy this musical introduction to coffee.
Well, we have the pleasure now of talking to Kelly Patterson, who is our field correspondent about exotic food and drink, drinks and food from the tropical rainforest. And Kelly, are you there with us today? I am here. Ah, great. Well, we're going to have fun talking about the topic of coffee. Is that what you've got for us today? Yes. 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 All about coffee. I call it a coffee break. (laughs) (laughs) Very good. (laughs) Well, we're going to take about a 15, 20-minute coffee break right now and get educated about coffee. Now, I love coffee. Coffee is a part of my routine. I think that's probably true of a lot of people. Can you give us some idea? Is is coffee as popular with others as it is with me? It is. In fact, um, the number one consumers of coffee in the world are actually the Finnish people. Um, oh, America is only number 25, believe it or not. Oh, you're kidding. No. Really? Well, I, I always knew the French love their coffee. Yes, they do. Um, yes, but the, the well, Finns, we're 20, we're 20... it's very big in Scandinavia, um, see, Norway, Iceland, Denmark. These are all at the very top of the coffee consumers. Those are pretty cold, cold places, too, it seems exactly. to me. Exactly. <laughs> you, you might need coffee to survive. Exactly. <laughs> But still, I am surprised. We're like 25th on the list, did you say? Yeah, that was as of 2010, the latest numbers I could find. I see. Well, that's pretty uh, pretty current. My goodness. We know coffee comes from a tropical plant, right? Yes. Tell us some more. Tell us about coffee, what we ought to know about this. Okay. You may have heard the legend. There, there's a, a legend about coffee that it began with a goat herder in Ethiopia, whose goats munched on coffee berries and became so energized that he reported this amazing find to his local monastery. And then the abbot from the monastery then supposedly brewed a beverage from the coffee berries and found himself so alert and energetic that the coffee phenomenon was born. Well, that story is apocryphal. (laughs) But <laughs> but it, it is it is a fact that coffee does come from that region. Um, the first evidence of coffee consumption comes from the Sufi monasteries of Yemen and in Egypt as far back as the 15th century. So it started in that area. Mm-hmm. And one possibility for the popular of coffee co- popularity of coffee in that region all along has been the Muslims have a prohibition against alcohol. So that just kind of gives them a, a substitute, so to speak. Gives them a substitute, something else, yes. Uh-huh. And so I imagine coffee is uh, the coffee plants. It, I, I, it grows on a, like a small tree, as I understand it, and grown a lot throughout the tropics. Uh, but it started over in Africa, obviously. Yeah, it started in the in the Middle East, that area. And, um, and then it, it, through trade, moved to Europe. First in Venice, um, in the first European coffee house was opened in Venice in 1645. Wow, we know that. Yes, yes, believe it. (laughs) (laughs) Who kept track of that one? (laughs) And then from there, the Dutch got hold of some coffee plants. So suddenly they took it and planted it in Java. So suddenly it's being grown in another region, besides you know the Middle East, Africa, and then the French took it to Martinique. So it it began spreading throughout the world as other regions got hold of coffee. So now the number one growers of coffee are Brazil. Well, I thought that, you know, coffee generally came from tropical countries, but uh, from what you're saying, not always. Apparently some coffee's grown in, in more temperate areas, which I didn't know. That's interesting. Yeah, the top five countries right now are Brazil, Vietnam, Indonesia, Colombia, and India. So planting. Yeah, I was going to ask you. Do you know how it's actually grown? It, does it require? I, as I recall, it, it's not a. It's an understory kind of plant. It, it can grow in the shade of other trees, and so it doesn't have to be a monoculture plantation. That that's actually what you're describing is the sustainable way to grow coffee. There there are two ways. It could either be shade grown, which is what you're describing, or sun grown. And shade grown is the original method, and that's more sustainable. The coffee is planted in the shade of indigenous trees, which helps to maintain the natural habitats of native animals and insects. And it also requires less water with this method. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. In the seventies and eighties, sun grown coffee became popular with large scale producers 
because it provides high yields in less time, but it means chopping down all the trees and the increased use of pesticides and fertilizers. It uses more water. Oh, let's do that. That sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's destroy the rainforest. Yeah, so, um, there, you know, there is a movement away from that, but... So it's you like know. other other tropical uh, crops we've talked about already. That there's talk about sustainable production. There's some movement towards it. There may be some organizations set up within the industries to kind of promote it, but we're not very far down that road. And right now, most of it is produced unsustainably. Is am I right about that with coffee? Yeah, a lot of the large scale producers are doing that. It's like fair trade. You know, fair trade coffee means that a grower is guaranteed a, a negotiated pre-harvest price. There is a movement toward that, but unfortunately, consumers say they're in favor of that, but don't want to pay for fair trade coffee. They don't want to pay the extra. What do you know about um, organic coffee? Just the, it's like the, we're talking about with the shade grown. You don't need the, the pesticides and the fertilizers and all that as much with the shade grown. But, you know, again, these large-scale producers are just looking to save a buck. Well, I know organic is not a big part of the market. In fact, I've read that it's something like 3% of coffee production is actually produced organically. But it is growing. And they've seen growth in the 10 to 30% a year growth mm -hmm. in purchasing of organic coffees. And that, of course, is better for the environment, better for consumers. That's it right. It costs more, of course. Apparently, you know, there's a growing market for it. So that's a good thing. At least there's some of that going on. But again, when you say, when you, say right. you know, if it's only 3% of the crop that's grown organically, that means 97% is not organic. Then you're back to artificial fertilizers and pesticides and all this garbage that so damages our environments. And Do you have any numbers about how big is this coffee industry? <laughs> you know, you surprised us, exactly. or me at least, with those numbers about the banana crops being the fourth largest I in the world. Yeah, you know, it was actually kind of hard to find. I know it's one of the top traded commodities. It's traded like a commodity uh -huh. on the uh -huh. commodities exchanges. Oh, I think I might have just found something here. I don't know if I can oh, believe good. this, but this is what it says. <laughs> It's a list of companies that produce coffee of the 20 top countries. It's just like you said, uh -huh. Brazil, Vietnam, Indonesia, Colombia, India, and so on and so on. The total in tonnage, 8,359,376 uh -huh. tons. Wow. <laughs> that was two years ago. It's probably bigger today. Right. Eight million tons. Okay, I'm starting to get real educated. A hundred billion <laughs> bananas and eight million tons of coffee. <laughs> oh, I, I don't I laugh a lot, but you know, that's usually a cover for wanting to cry. I mean, so much of this environmental, when you consider the environmental cost of doing these things. Right. Well, yeah, like you said, 97% of it's not it, organic. It, it, it makes my soul ache. It just really upsets me. Mm -hmm. I, I'm in that space today, and I have to apologize to our listeners. If we didn't have topics to stay on, I'd probably make a real mess of things. I'm very upset about what I'm learning. I'm trying to get a clear picture of just where we are with the instruction of the environment these days. It's getting more and more into focus and, and the more in focus it gets for me, the less I want to see it. But it's just, it's so, it's heartbreaking. But coffee is great stuff. We love coffee. I don't want to give up my coffee. No, I, I would no, just I like it not to destroy the environment at the same time. I'm drinking my coffee. I don't feel good about that. That's not okay. No. No. Well, is there anything more you can tell us? I need to shut up. Oh. <laughs> you are listening to Jungle Deep. 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 Hello, this is Dr. Jones. I believe that the destruction of the tropical rainforest is humankind's greatest environmental problem. Not climate change, not pollution, not nuclear waste, not food production, not a whole host of topics you could add to the list. I care about these things, and I have to admit that climate change and the depletion of the oceans have my particular attention. But I know that the destruction of the tropical rainforest is number one. Now, I would not be surprised if you told me that none of the people around you in your daily life are doing anything to help save the remaining tropical rainforest. We obviously have to change this situation. Many people do not take action on this issue because they are confused about what to do. Confusion breeds inaction. Well, I have a solution. 
visit the Jungle Deep website and look in the directory at the top of the show homepage for my new article called How Can I Help Save the Rainforest? It includes my five steps to saving the rainforest. It's simple, direct, clear cut. Oh, I, I probably shouldn't have used that expression. It's, uh, it's direct and it's simple. Anyone can follow these steps and everyone should. Get a copy into the hands of everyone around you. At the very least, it's a great conversation starter. And together, when there is enough of us taking action, we will save both humanity and the planet. Read and print out the list, Five Steps to Saving the Rainforest, from the Jungle Deep website. Go to calaverasgold.tv and click on Jungle Deep in the directory. This is Kelly Camille Patterson of the Velveteen Lounge Kitchen, and I make my lime jello marshmallow cottage cheese surprise while listening to Jungle Deep. Hi, I'm Al Bowl, film producer of Tars and Lord of Louisiana Jungle, and I clean my lenses while listening to Jungle Deep. Aloha, this is Marty Lush from the Tikiaki Orchestra, and when I'm not vibing with the band, I'm listening to the vibes of Ken Jones and Jungle Deep. Jungle Deep, 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 deep. Exotic animals in their homes are what we talk about on Jungle Deep. Join biologists, zoologists, botanists, conservationists, and climatologists as they talk with me about the marvels of the tropical rainforest and how we might save them from extinction. This show is fun and one of a kind. Hi, I'm Dr. Jones, and if you love nature and her creatures like I do, join us on the podcast. Jungle Deep, 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 deep. Hello, this is Dr. Jones. I believe the better you get to know the jungle's wonderful creatures, the more you will care about them. And as you care about them, you'll want to join with me in efforts to protect them and save them from extinction. I want to draw your attention to the Jungle Deep website and the ways I am promoting tropical rainforest education and conservation. In addition to the awesome expert guests and regular reports from our wonderful field correspondents on the podcast, I am building a website with resources to help everyone, especially students, find helpful and motivating information. One example is the new Wildlife Theater, which will contain a collection of photos and videos of exotic animals from the jungles around the world. Top-notch zoos and other conservation groups are contributing content to the Jungle Deep Wildlife Theater. You will find the Jungle Deep website by going to www.calaverasgold.tv. That's Calaveras, C-A-L-A-V-E-R-A-S, gold, G-O-L-D, like the mineral, dot TV, as in television, and clicking on Jungle Deep in the directory. Check the Jungle Deep website often because it's growing every week. Jungle Deep is a one-of-a-kind podcast that promotes conservation in a most entertaining way. If you want me to make more Jungle Deep episodes, let me know by making a donation to this environmental education podcast. If you would like, for a donation of $20 or more, I'll be happy to make a shout-out on the show. That's a short message about your favorite wildlife or conservation organization. You may send any amount by check mailed to me, the producer, Ken Jones, at P.O. Box 61 Murphy's, M-U-R-P-H-Y-S, California, 95247. You know, most people don't make a donation and just listen to the podcast for free. That makes your donation all the more important. The core message of Jungle Deep is that we need more people to participate in conservation. It's not enough to love nature. These days, caring about the environment absolutely requires action. Your action in support of this show will be used to grow Jungle Deep and to help me reach more people with our conservation message. Thank you. Now, more of Jungle Deep. 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 What else can you tell us about coffee? I I can tell you that there, there are a lot of choices involved with coffee and well, after the planting, whether you decide whether you want to do the shade grown or the sun grown, you can decide how you want to cultivate it. Will it be hand picked or strip picked? And hand picked means that the berries will be picked at the peak of ripeness, but of course, it requires people to pick it and it's time consuming. Strip picked is they just go in and pick them all, ripe or not. And then it's fermented, where the fleshy part of the berry is removed and the seeds remain. Then the seeds are washed, which uses a lot of water, dried, roasted, and grated by shade from light to dark, and then it goes to market. 
and then the consumer has all these choices. Do you buy it ground? Do you buy beans? Do you grind it yourself? How do you brew it? <laughs> French press, drip machine, percolator, espresso maker, instant coffee. There's just choices galore with coffee. Well, to, to flash back on what something you just said a moment ago, I, it takes 37 gallons of U.S. gallons of water to produce the coffee beans needed to produce just one cup of coffee. Yes, yes. That so water consumption for the production of coffee apparently is a very big environmental concern. And in a world that uh, has yes. less and less fresh water all the time, this could get to be a problem. Okay, so there's all these wonderful different kinds yeah. of coffee. I haven't sampled enough of them, I'm sure, but I, I'm, I'm going to work on that. What else can you tell us? Many people are afraid of the health effects from coffee. They think that, mm. you know, it's not good for them. But in fact, coffee has been found to reduce the risk for certain diseases such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, heart disease, and type 2 diabetes. It can exacerbate anxiety in those who are prone to anxiety disorders or you know, it causes issues for people who are sensitive to caffeine, but it's generally not the health villain that it's made out to be. Well, good. Yeah, so <laughs> there is good news there. And let's... Like, like so many things, yeah. you know, taken in moderation. Yeah. It's okay. And then I just have kind of a fun fact here. The term coffee break was coined in 1952 huh. by the Pan American Coffee Bureau. <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, coffee was coming into offices. You know, they had... We're getting coffee machines and coffee vent. Uh -huh. Now, see, I would have thought or coffee breaks is something that just kind of evolved organically, but you're, you're saying it was actually created by a, a, a coffee bureau? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> promote people drinking well. coffee. You know, cause, because then coffee becomes associated with breaks. So if you're taking your break, you have to well, get a I, cup of coffee. I, that's right. And everybody <laughs> loves breaks. So that's by association, right. you got to love your coffee, right? That's, right? that's pretty clever. That's pretty clever. <laughs> I like yes. that one. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> you, you come up with some <laughs> some neat information. That's terrific. Fun facts. Hey, do you know how coffee is decaffeinated, though, for those that prefer it that way? I've always wondered, yeah, is, is there any think, downside to that? Yeah, there, it's a water process. Basically, it's a soaking process to remove caffeine. And then the caffeine, in turn, oh. is sold mostly to the pharmaceutical industry. Huh. Okay. Yeah, so... <laughs> so it takes even more water to produce decaffeinated coffee. Yes. But they don't they don't use any kind of solvents or chemicals to neutralize that caffeine. There's nothing health wise to worry about there. No. That you no, know. No, no, they they just yeah. I see, okay. Well, okay, very good. That's a little bit of good news. Yeah. All right. Are you going to tell us you have uh, some fun and interesting ways to experience coffee? I do. Coffee is actually very versatile and can be used as an ingredient in cooking and cocktails. I like to put it in sauces. You just add it a little bit of coffee to certain things, and it just it gives it a really interesting flavor. But I have beverages today. In 1993, the state of Rhode Island the state Senate voted to make coffee milk the official Rhode Island state beverage. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> I don't even know what coffee milk is. I know what milk in my coffee is. <laughs> you know, I didn't either until, I'm, until I married a guy from Rhode Island. Oh. Yeah, it's very big in Rhode Island. They make coffee syrup. The most famous one is by a company called Autocrat. I, I see it here on, in the grocery store, but they sell it online too. And it's just, it's like a, chocolate syrup or you know whatever but it's coffee flavored with sugar in it so you would just add that to milk and stir it up and you've got the official rhode island state beverage do they drink that cold or hot yeah cold cold okay cold. Hmm. and then for a more adult beverage i have one called the barfly the barfly okay <laughs> which uses two ounces of caruba dark jamaica rum one ounce cold black coffee, three quarters of an ounce pineapple juice, <laughs> one half ounce fresh lime juice, and one half ounce of ginger syrup and a dash of grapefruit jitters. And you would just shake all that and strain it into a cocktail glass. I'm sorry, you said a, a dash of what? 
Grapefruit bitters. Grapefruit bitters. Yeah. Let's see, yeah. We're, we're using Skype, and sometimes words drop out, and I think oh, that dropped okay. out just then. And I, you know, with a recipe, uh, I, I figured our listeners would go, what, 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 what was that? What was that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will have this recipe on, as we always do, on the show notes page for this episode, and you'll be able to check it out there and uh, follow that there. Grape juice bitters yeah uh, pineapple juice that, yeah pineapple, oh, pineapple juice, juice and lime juice all right all right it's amazing to me all the things they come up with uh-huh. <laughs> i don't know if i could ever afford to truly stock a bar the way it should be done but if that ever happens i'm going to call on you because <laughs> oh, yes. you'll know yeah it's less expensive all the things. to do it gradually <laughs> <laughs> yes i guess a lifetime pursuit yeah, perhaps <laughs> it could run into some money <laughs> well that's uh that's fascinating so what, what do you end up with now <laughs> you, yeah, you shake it um, with ice and strain it into a cocktail glass. So you know you end up with something that you know shaped like a martini. It's it's not it's not super sweet. It's just sweet enough. You know it's it, it's um yeah I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fan. Well, I appreciate. <laughs> Again, you've had some great information, it made us a little more aware of one more crop, one more product, one more thing we enjoy from the tropical rainforest of the world, and hopefully uh, we'll appreciate it maybe even a little more, and I am hopeful that others will do more to help make sure these things get done sustainably, if that is possible. We at least got to work towards that. We're running out of time here. The gifts of the rainforest are amazing and very abundant. It's just one reason why we need to protect right. it. And I so appreciate your contributions to our podcast here and telling us about today, coffee. Thank you. And we're going to look forward to hearing what you come up with next. Really, really. It's, oh, yeah. it, it, it's a great uh, a great addition to the show, and I want to thank you, Kelly. Oh, thank you. I can't wait. Bye-bye, Kelly. Okay. Bye-bye.
The music in this podcast has been, in the intro, Jericonda Mix by Ken Jones with Apple Music Loops and Odyssey by Gerardo Miguel Maza. After the break, we heard Offering by Gerardo Miguel Maza and a segment in our episode closing is by Don Tiki called Jungle Julie. Be sure to share Jungle Deep Podcast with your friends and co-workers. The show is my creation and at my personal expense. It is not currently subsidized by any business or organization. Audience growth is especially important for Jungle Deep to succeed and prosper. So share the show. You can see beautiful photos and learn more about Jungle Deep at our website, calaverasgold.tv. Now that's Spanish, calaveras, C-A-L-A-V-E-R-A-S, gold, G-O-L-D, like the mineral, dot TV, like television. You gotta check it out. Where else can you go for this kind of fun? Just click on the Jungle Deep title in the header directory. Our show notes pages have valuable links for you. I invite you to email me at jungledeep at calaverasgold.tv and follow me on Twitter. Search for Jungle Deep or Ken Jones 56 all one word. I would love to hear your ideas for the show. Well, the show's over for today, so it's time to refill my Mai Tai, mount my elephant, and head back into the jungle.